In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can use an OAuth to authorization technique to make sure you're authenticating your server endpoints in FastAPI. Let's get the video started. All right, so this is where we left off in the previous video. We learned about using forms. We learned about using uploading files and things like that. But for this one, we're going to be using is uh, we're going to be using the Python multi-part and installing that in your uh, virtual environment. So if you're from the previous video, you would have already done this. And I just want to reiterate that if you're new to this video, make sure installing your Python multi-part. Now, what is exactly OAuth2? OAuth2 is basically uh, an authorization criteria or you can say that it is actually a standardized protocol wherein any service that you see, for example, your Google, your uh, Facebook, your uh, Instagram, any type of uh, service that you see does have this authentication enabled. Now, when a user is trying to access these services, he will be given a token. This token is going to be very, very simple form of understanding between the client and the server that this is actually an authorized user. This is going to be the very brief explanation when it comes to OAuth 2. Now, I would highly recommend you guys to, if you are interested to dig deeper into OAuth 2, uh, make sure you check that out. I put a very interesting read in the description below. Now, let's go into Fast API to understand how we can make OAuth 2 and uh, use OAuth 2 to secure our service endpoint. So, first thing first, once you have the Python multipart installed, you will say from Fast API security, you will import your first one. One is going to be OAuth 2 password bearer. I'll tell you what exactly is the password bearer. Followed by that, you'll also use OAuth 2. Uh, you'll be requesting a request form. Now, what exactly does these two things do? Now, for example, the password bearer, nothing but a simple way of understanding. Let me actually also zoom in so that you guys can see it much better. All right. So this is going to be the OAuth2 password, password bearer, which is actually a route that is specified, wherein it is going to consider a username and a password every single time. So this is basically saying that there's a username available, there's a password available, and make sure that the user is giving that every single time now once you have the username and the password you can say that uh, make sure that you are understanding or giving a simple token to this specific endpoint so the, like this basically you say you auth scheme is equal to you are saying auth to password bearer and you are now able to say token url is equal to what is the endpoint that you want to hit every single time somebody is requesting for an auth to password or auth to token so when you say this auth to scheme is going to be a variable or you can say that it's actually an instantiated variable where every single time you want access to a token uh, you will be calling this one or you'll be depending on your OAuth to password bearer and it will give the route for us to understand where the token is from or where it's going to be stored for. Now, it's a little bit difficult if you're coming straight into understanding OAuth 2. There's a very complicated example also given as part of the wiki from the fast API itself. So I've shortened it down to make it, make it easy for you guys to understand. All right, so this is very simple, right? Now you understood how to create a password bearer. Now, once the password bearer is created, now we can now say, app.get you will say the token you're creating the route for the token meaning this is going to be the same route which is going to be taken from this one so the token url is going to be slash token at the end so every and it could be any type of uh, you you can understand that it, it could be any type of uh, url it could be localhost slash token it could be your service name slash token so we, when you want to say attach my token to always this route this is what you do all right, so you have done this and you will try to now say an async uh, def you'll call it uh, i call it as a login or i you can say that token generate right you can say token generate or in this method you will say the form data that is coming in via my token or via my uh, request which is going to be a username and password i want to catch it so that i can be able to send the token back so what exactly is the form data going to be? The form data is going to be of the type OAuth2 password request form. It's going to be of that form. And it's also going to be dependent on that. Meaning that when you say depends, right? When you say something is going to depends on that use in fast api it's it's going to be uh, it's going to mean that this has to get executed or this method should have this type of this type a class and it should get executed only then this method is going to go inside if there is no form data available of this class it's not going to go inside so that's what the depends is going to mean You're 
creating a dependency injection one by one and this is actually a very complicated example or you can say it's very very detailed example in the wiki itself but this is going to be a very simple one to do now what exactly should you do when a user is requesting for a token you should give the user some token right that's what is going to be the first step of OAuth through now in order to do that i'm just going to say first of all just let me print the form data right and in the second step i'm going to return my uh, token itself the token is of two type it should have two important uh, data present as part of the json the first is going to be the access token itself i'll come to that let me say something for now just name empty token for now and then you have the access type so access type or the token type is going to be what type of token is going to be sent and OAuth 2 specifies that we have to send it as part of a bearer token so the bearer is what we are trying to do using my uh, using our OAuth 2 password bearer also so we, when we are just saying this we are saying that uh, when whenever somebody is accessing or requesting for a token make sure to send that token or give that token some data here and also the token type is going to be a bearer now we cannot just say some data right we need to we need to give it we cannot send an empty token we need to send it with some value so i'm just going to for this example just send it with my username so the form data is of type password request form if you go simply inside this you can see that this is how it's going to be looking like it's going to have a data and the data is going to have a username the data is going to have a password and the data will also be having a client id a client seeker i'll show you guys what exactly all of these are in a couple of minutes but let's go back here so there's going to be some form of username that's going to come in there's going to be some form of password that's going to come in and we are actually creating an access token from that and you're sending it all right so this is going to be the brute force of the very basic layer of creating a token now this is going to create token for anybody and everybody we don't have a way of uh, understanding if the user is able to is, is, is he actually a good user or is he actually a malicious user we're not checking any of that we're just getting or creating a token for any user who's actually requesting for a token all right so this is going to be a token generation now let's say that i'm going to be trying to create or access a page now when i want to access a page i'm going to say first check if the token is there and if the token is there use this token to get the user name and from the username you are able to go forward so this is going to be the uh, this is going to be how a service is going to work so in order to do that you just say let's create a simple route again we'll say uh, post route i'll say uh, probably i'll probably say selfie or selfie is where i'm going to be uploading my data or uploading things like that now when i want the selfie uh, endpoint to get executed i'll say probably say user uh, user slash user slash selfie so when i say users slash selfie it means that my selfie or my specific uh, username user should have a selfie or maybe a profile picture might, might make much, much better sense right profile pic okay this my specific profile pic should be able to i should be able to get that now i cannot do that again right i can i, I cannot like go back and authenticate and get a token and do that fast api gives you the depends method which is going to be making it super easy for you to make or create dependency injections where you say async and you say def you say a uh, selfie or um, profile pick and inside this you will be saying the token which have a token right the token is going to be from the token is basically going to be an str obviously and it's also going to depend on your oauth scheme meaning that you're saying only if the token is present or when only, only when that you to url token or the where you have the slash url is already generated and sent a token only if i'm authenticated to do that you go inside this method itself so that way we are now able to very cleanly uh, make sure that the user is authenticated to go in first of all now the token we'll just print the token and for our purpose let's just return something like this we will say uh, probably user and you will not be able to have access to any of the data we'll have only access to the token itself so probably we might have a reverse method where from the token we are able to get a username but for this this example i'm just going to say bharat watch because that's my name and i'm i'll just say probably profile pic uh, probably some profile pic data like uh, my face right this is basically just a st string example that i want to give so that i can show you how the flow works all right so basically i've constructed these two methods and i need to now be able to run this and see how it works so one quick uh, change that i would request to do here is that you cannot have a get token method it should always be a post token method because when you are trying to say generate a token you could you can you can consider that as specific to a login right you can say 
call this method as login even. So what exactly does this method re really do here? When you say a post method, you're saying you need to generate the uh, or you are taking the form data, posting it to this uh, this endpoint and gener generating the token. You, it should not be a get method rather a post method. And this one I would I recommend a post or a get because we are trying to see or maybe change data here. I would I did I, I maybe I would call this as a get request also. And that's the one change that I wanted to before I'm firing up my UVCon. So let's quickly go do that. UVCon main app reload or just main app, fire this main app and we'll just see what happens. So, all right, so this is uh, my endpoint. I mean, I don't have a home directory, so I, I cannot see what is that in the home directory. Go to docs. As soon as you go to docs, you will see that there's a green shiny button right here. So what exactly is the shiny button going to do? And when you click on the shiny button, it takes you to or asks you to give a username and a password, a client ID and a client secret. No, client ID and client secret or optional data, you needn't give it. I'll explain more about that probably in the next few videos because uh, this is going to be also another way of authenticating your service uh, with username and password let's say i'm going to give my username as Bharatwaj and uh, my some password right we don't have a mechanism to check if the username and password are correct but let's generate a token to see how it works now, when you click on authorize you are now generating a username a password it says that client credential location is basic and the client secret is also generated now once that is generated the browser is now storing our token we are not able to see the token but the browser is saving the token now let let the browser hold it now we'll go ahead and try a few other locations or try to see what how how the other ones are actually performing now we are trying to get this endpoint we're trying to uh, access this endpoint now what i'm going to say is go and try it out and basically what does it take it does not take any any data from me i'm just going to execute it and as soon as I execute it it is actually giving me the value now i'll go back here to show you guys how what actually is happening now when you see here uh, the token it's printing my name because that is the token that we are sending as part of this method when you're saying login we're just sending the access token to be a username now the browser is holding it in this example the client is saving it somewhere and for every authentication or for every url that i'm trying to hit in this example a user's profile picture it is first going through the token it's trying to access the token but only if the token is there it is now going in so we have created a very basic bare bone security in just probably under 10 lines of code now let's try one another thing right now let's go here and we'll click this and we'll log out we'll now log out and refresh this page again and we'll go here we'll just say go to probably docs i don't have any data it's it's actually open now if you can see the uh, log symbol now i'll try it out now let me try it out and see what happens now I don't, I'm not logged in. There is no token generated. So as soon as I'm not having any token generated, it's throwing a not not authenticated error. Now this is pretty much what I expected for my services to work like. It should have a token. If it does not have a token, just throw out, throw it out. Very very simple, and that's what I wanted to expect as well. Now how do you actually make this much more uh, much more authenticated or much more secure? First things we are creating a token for every user who's coming in or every user who has uh, was access to this token endpoint and passes the data like username and password will get a token generated that is not what i want so what i would do instead is have a database where i'm saving all the new user along with the hashed password now when the user is sending the username i'll first check if the user is there in my db all right the user is there in the db now next i will check is i'll check if the password that user is sending is the, i'm converting it to a hash password and checking if the hash password and the password in my db are, are equal and if it's equal now i'm going to generate a token and the token shouldn't always be a username it should have some form of uh, encrypted mechanism or it should have an encrypted algorithm that is going to take the username and the password and create a token with respect to the session only now think of this token uh, let's say that some hacker is able to get access to this token now you'll be able to get access to every endpoint right so in order to prevent that every token should always get uh, expired in probably one hard time 60 minutes is what most of the services will be uh, keeping it at so if you if you are also creating a service that way make sure to keep it uh, maybe like an expiry time of 60 minutes or 360 milliseconds 3600 milliseconds all right so that's pretty much how 
you will be creating and authenticating with an OAuth 2 and also what I wanted to explain as part of this video. So this is going to be even getting complex as the next videos like we go for the next few videos and talk about middleware and things like that as well. And if you would like, uh, if you guys are interested in seeing all of that, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll meet you guys in the next video. Until then, Bharat, peace out. Have a super awesome day.